the moment, build on the progress made in recent weeks, and right our ship of state. Governor Bruce Rauner from earlier this morning the budget address 2017. We're joined now by controller Susana Mendoza with us uh, all morning or uh, all evening long. I appreciate your time. We we're talking about how the state moves forward. Obviously, there's going to be some partisan politics as far as what the governor presented now. But mm -hmm. let's look at the reality because it's still not good. You know that everyone right. knows that. How are you moving forward with what we have right now? Well, I'm trying to triage the reality of what an $11.9 billion debt by tomorrow might be $12 billion at this point. Um, every day it's trying to manage the most vulnerable uh, when you're looking at zero to no money available to do that. But you know, this is a job that I signed up for. This is a job that I'm working and passionate about every day. The reality of it is we need a budget in order for me to be able to pay bills in a timely way. And so I hope that the legislature can come together at this point. I mean, I, I have no hope at this point that we'll ever see a balanced budget proposal from this governor. So thank God that there are legislators who are willing to step up and carry that weight, right? It's not their job but I'm glad that someone's willing to do it. And I think that hopefully if, if the governor just really truly wants to stay out of this, let the legislature do their job, and then hopefully come on board and support and in good faith work with them to sign a balanced budget proposal that gets us on the right track, that allows our office to be able to meet its constitutional obligation of paying the state's bills and be able to hopefully get our state out of this horrific abyss that it's in. It's gonna take us decades to recover from the last two years. And you know we've had six cre credit rating downgrades under this governor. SMP just most recently last week attributed in large part the the crisis that we're in to the governor's fixation with his pet projects. And I, I think like at some point he's going to have to decide: Do we want to continue another two years without a budget, or is he willing to like put the good of the state ahead of? you know, the good of his, you know, political points. Comptroller, as we talk about the decisions that you have to make every single day, there's another pressure point that's coming very soon as Attorney General Lisa Madigan goes to court and state workers are wondering if they're going to be able to keep getting paid or not without an appropriation in place. The governor has called on your office to fight that, fight, get an outside attorney like your predecessor did, fight that in court. What are you doing right now to ensure that state workers are going to, going to keep getting their paychecks? Well, we are preparing to do whatever it is that the court determines that I have legal authority to do. So the governor, frankly, is being very irresponsible to continuously prod a fellow constitutional officer with willingly breaking the law without a legal appropriation or a court order giving me legal authority to pay the bills. It would be a violation of the law for me to continue to pay. I believe state employees should be paid. I believe vendors who are providing services to the state should be paid. I believe that every single service agency that's working hard on behalf of people should be paid. This is all doable if the governor does his job and the legislature comes together and actually passes a balanced budget proposal. But there is no way that I am going to ever be above the law. The governor is not above the law and nobody in this state should be above the law. But most importantly, the chief executive officer of the state should stop prodding a constitutional officer to break the law. That's It's unacceptable, it's unethical, and I'm not going to break the law. Controller's website lists the bill backlog as current as, as you can make it. It also lists the recent months of the, you can see a graph that goes up and down, up sure. and down. Is there anything on the horizon that you see before a compromise is reached where that's lessened, where you can tell social service providers or college students or anybody else that there is some good news on the way. There is no good news right now on the way. Without a budget, there's no good news to report. I hope the next time I get to do an interview uh, with your fine TV station that I have some good news to report. But right now, my job is to tell the truth about what the state's fiscal uh, crisis means, to actually put a face on who these people are that are suffering and, and are being impacted. You know, um, it's, it's not the wealthiest people in the state right now. It's the people in nursing homes. It's the children with disabilities. It's kids who, you know, even in today's budget, the governor makes, you know, zeroed out funding for things like jobs programs for youth in inner cities and, and teen reach programs. And you wonder why the violence is spiking in places like Chicago, right? So there is a correlation to whether we choose to invest in people or to disinvest. But you know, at the end of the day, there are, there are plenty of places where he can cut. Maybe he shouldn't start by cutting the most vulnerable. We appreciate your time again and hope for both our sakes and for everyone else watching that there is some good news shortly and I we hope can so. talk again. I but do. We do appreciate you weighing in here. Hope runs eternal. <laughs> so I am an optimist. It may not seem like it right now. It but didn't seem like I it. Know, but we but do appreciate your honesty and candor. Thank you. You got it. Thank